are talking, where are we? New the Orleans. Royal House, New Orleans. New Good morning, everybody. How's the gang? It's March 4th, and I'm at St. Louis Cemetery. Now, this video's been done over and over on YouTube. I'm going to be doing it a different way. Number one, you, got, you can't go in without a tour group, and I'm not doing that. It may also be closed for COVID, but we're still going to have a close look if I have my way. So, without further ado, let's take a flight. Here, against the backdrop of this modern city, we look below, just beyond the edge of the ever-pulsing French Quarter. There sits a small quiet zone, striking to the eye, captivating to the imagination and stirring to the soul. This is St. Louis Cemetery Number 1, which embodies volumes of rich local history, yet exudes undefinable mystique. It is here we see the oldest surviving New Orleans cemetery, which was established in 1789, only a year after three major disasters, which had ended so many human lives, thus creating the need for much more burial space. Just a year before, in 1788, the first of two great colonial fires occurred, destroying 856 buildings, which represented more than 80% of the city in just one evening. Next there was a flood and also the yellow fever epidemic, all of which had crowded the city's first cemetery, which was located on St. Peter's Street. So up rose the necessity for a new burial ground here. Once again, the church decided to place the new cemetery at the edge of the city. And by that year, the city had grown out to here, this area right here, which is North Rampart Street. But the only signs of activity were the horses, the carriages, and wagons slowly rumbling through the desolate streets. It was noted by one doctor that so many bodies had piled up during this epidemic that the cemetery workers had to, quote unquote, fortify themselves with liquor, just to tolerate the smell of the decaying human remains in the sweltering summer heat. It was a challenge to get people to move the bodies. They were piling up and piling up. People had the misguided belief that the cause of yellow fever and malaria was proximity to the corpses.
So it was here, at the gates of this cemetery, where the winds brought the information of the corruption that was working within. The air here was laden thick with the rank atmosphere from the rotting corpses. Inside they were piling up, fifty at a time, exposed to the heat of the sun, swollen, bursting their coffin lids, a feast of horrors. So many bodies, they actually piled up in pyramids inside, all inside these openings here, before the cemetery even had gates. Old and weathered men and women dispersed ice creams and confections while brushing away the green bottle flies that hovered on their merchandise. Then they would buzz away to drink the inhalations from the green and festering corpses. And here is the future home of one Nicolas Cage, a Hollywood actor. The pyramid will fit six caskets, and it's interesting to note there were and are a lot of very angry people here and around the cemetery because, to start with, this really does not fit the vocabulary of what's going on here. You can see it's written on the front in Latin, means everything from one. Now, some people would come here and kiss the pyramid with red lipstick. And according to the archdiocese rules, they were cleaned off from time to time. But Nicholas came out in August of 16, and he called the manager, a guy named John. He said, where are my kisses? And John said, we cleaned them off. So John got a rude dress down from Mr. Cage and told him never to do that again. You leave my kisses on there, he said. So John got the speed dial out, called the superiors at the archdiocese, and just shut Mr. Cage down and told him, sorry, buddy, that's the rules here at St. Louis. Here we see in the distance the tallest structure in the cemetery, the elaborate tomb for the Italian Mutual Benevolent Society, or for short, they call her Mother Italy. It was designed by Italian architect Pietro Gualdi. The entire facade is made from Italian Carrera marble. And upon its completion, Gualdi and the founder of this benevolent society, they were the first and second persons to be interred within. But much later, it had a more dubious distinction thanks to Dennis Hopper and Peter Fonda. They were here on location doing that film, Easy Rider. Well, Peter Fonda, climbed up on the lap of the statue. He pretended he was crying and whispering in her ear. And Dennis Hopper told him, hey, visualize you're talking to your dead mother. Now, Peter Fonda's mother had committed suicide years before, so that wasn't enough. They came back to the cemetery and they had an orgy right in front of the statue. So now no movies can be filled in any of the Catholic cemeteries here. So nice work, Hollywood. Thank you. 
And yes, we couldn't forget, and we did find it. This is, or was, the tomb of Marie Laveau. Now, people commonly refer to her as the infamous voodoo queen. But in reality, she was a very well-known healer here, a good person, and a community leader. She was loved and cherished by the people. When she died, her funeral was immense. Practically the whole city turned out in the street. Several people have told me that her remains have been moved to another location that remains undisclosed. I'm not sure, but it's possibly because of all the vandalism. It's so sad, people placing X's, making wishes, spinning around, and all sorts of other antics. As you look at the tomb here, it says, Famille Viva Paris, which is family of the widow Paris, born Laveau. Underneath it, it says, here lies Marie Philomene Le Pion. So the painting of the tomb in pink about did it, and that with everything else piled up is probably why the archdiocese closed the cemetery. And unless you are with a tour guide, you are not getting in. Well, it's time to depart New Orleans. I'm sad to go. It had really exceeded my expectations, and I do hope to return soon, someday.